Hello everyone, welcome back to another new episode again in the playlist from Books to Reality and in this episode we will focus on wheel contact area of live loads. During our structural analysis textbooks or during our structural analysis studies we have come across chapters in which moving loads or influence line diagrams are discussed and in moving loads chapter there were typically 4 to 5 cases where either single live load is moved, two point loads are moved or a group of point loads spaced at a specific distance from each other are moved. So if anyone is new to bridge engineering or wants to pursue a career in bridge engineering so his thought process would be like since we have studied the moving loads in point load form. In reality also, when traffic moves over the bridges, those structures are analyzed for live loads with the tires acting as point loads. So let's break this myth and see what the theory suggests, what various design codes suggest and then at the end of the episode we will see practical live examples and we will clearly visualize whether contact area is limited to a theoretical thing only or it has practical applications as well. So on your screens, I am now presenting two design codes. On the left we have Ashto code based on which all bridges in the United States are designed and on the right we have Eurocode. So let's discuss about the live load vehicle as per Ashto code first. So in Ashto code, we have a design truck. It's a single design truck, but it has three axles. We can see eight kilo pounds, 32 kilo pounds and 32 kilo pounds loads are acting. Now there is a catch. The last or the right two axles can be spaced from 14 foot to 30 foot depending upon various conditions. We'll discuss that why that happens in some another episode. But the point to be noted is that here it is appearing as if they have to be applied as point loads. But again, in this code only, there is a subsequent clause which talks about tire contact area. The clause is on your screens now, 3.6.1.2.5. You can see that the width of the contact area is 20 inches, the length is 10 inches as per design truck of Ashto, and this is a single rectangle. So basically, the dimension of the tire which is in touch with the ground in the direction of traffic is generally known as the length or the contact length, and the other dimension perpendicular to the contact length is the contact width. So now let's have a look at the Euro code. What does it indicate about contact area. So in Eurocode there are multiple live loads like load model 1, load model 2, load model 3, load model 4 depending upon which scenario you want to present while analyzing the bridge and these are also changed based upon national and access of various regions. So let's not focus on that and directly jump to one simple load which is load model 2 and see what is its contact area. Does it also say anything about contact area? So on your screen is load model 2 plan view. You can see that the contact width is 0.6 and the contact length is 0.35 because it is in the direction of traffic movement which is indicated by arrow at the top in direction x. So one thing is clear that contact area is clearly mentioned in many codes. Now, why to skip our very beautiful IRC 6 code? Let's see what's mentioned in IRC 6 codes. As we are aware, or if you are new to bridge engineering, IRC 6 has a clause 204 which talks about live loads. And in this, there are multiple live loads, 70R wheel, 70R track, 70R bogey, 40 ton bogey, 20 ton bogey, class A, class B. So that's not covered in this episode. Let's focus directly on one particular live load, which is class A in our case. So you can see that the highlighted rectangle has 2.7, 2.7, 11, 0.46, 0 0.8 and so on, axle loads and it is also indicated by downward arrows which may give an impression that these are applied as point loads while analyzing. Look at the plan view, contact length is B, contact width is W in this case because the direction of motion is from down to up as per this plan. Now it also presents a beautiful table where the ground contact dimensions are mentioned and it is very very clear that as the axle load is increasing, the contact area is also increasing. For instance, if you'll see the 11.4 axle load, there the contact area is 250 B and W is 500 but if you'll see the lowest axle load which is 2.7 the last row there the contact area is definitely smaller than all other cases present in this table. So one thing is very sure that definitely there is a theoretical concept known as contact area now whether it is practically also visible or practically also significant let's have a look and for that we need to go on the road see at the wheels of each moving traffic or each moving vehicle and then only we'll be figuring it out. So on your screens one by one I'll bring some examples and at the end you'll see a very very clear example where all your doubts will be blown away. So here in this very image you can see that there is a small contact length and definitely not a point load. Again let's go to this black sedan. Again it's noticed that there is a small contact length but definitely not a concentrated load. And it's not that just it's the front wheels. On all wheels this happens again if we notice this SUV there is a contact length. Again not a point load. Now as the size of vehicle increases the contact length will also increase. So let's focus on this truck wheel. Here we can clearly see that definitely there is no point load but a contact length which may be small but yeah there is a point there is no point load there is a contact length. So on your screens on all the images you can see that the highlighted colors indicate there is a contact length definitely present but we don't look at it whenever we go on the road simply because we don't observe like that. So this example on your screens is a very beautiful and very clear example. This is a construction crane used to lift girders and you can see that here the contact area is clearly clearly visible. It's not that the tire pressure is less. It's not that the tire is punctured or the air, air pressure is low. This is in reality how live load is simulated whenever it moves on the road. So that is why contact area concept is very important. If you analyze all the structures simply by point loads, then you will get higher design moments. And why that happens, we will discuss it in a future episode because contact area decides the dispersed area and dispersed area decides the UDL intensities or live load intensities for which structures or bridges should be designed, should be analyzed and should be checked. Simply, if you apply point loads, you may get a fair estimate of design moments, but you will be definitely taking higher design moments in reality than supposed to be coming on the structures. 
So that was all in this episode. Hope you liked it. If you did, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, like it and share with all other friends that you think may get benefited.